To say that Francis has a very vivid imagination is an understatement. I know we all kind of get that way to a degree, think that everyone's out to get us at various points in our lives, but most of us don't think that there are major schemes against us rather specifically. I suppose that with the more stature in the world one has, the more they're likely to indulge in that kind of thinking, and Francis absolutely engages in it. At the same time that we're going to talk about this, I'm going to give you a little bit of a peek to start this, though, at a very strange 2021 nativity scene in Vatican City, because it's really weird looking. And when that news broke, we also got the news that Francis is lumping a very mainstream Catholic outlet in with the rigid neo-pharisaical traditional Catholics that he just seems to dislike so much. I'm sure you've heard about his words about EWTN by now. Taylor Marshall did a video that got a lot of views on it. I'm going to give you a very different take on this, I think. But here's the thing. The typical Catholic parish, at least in the English-speaking world, is going to have a worldview very similar to that of EWTN. That network represents much more mainstream views than most of us on YouTube or in the podcasting world do. And it leaves me asking this. For the life of me, I don't know how far down the ideological spectrum on the hammer and sickle side of things you have to be to make that kind of logical error, but Francis has. To conflate meanie doo-doo-headed trads with EWTN of all places. So let's talk about EWTN, but really let's focus on something else Francis said that really reveals how he thinks. In a weird year that followed a really weird year, it only makes sense that the Vatican would unveil another bizarro world nativity scene and call it a good thing. Pay close attention to this because it'll ring familiar. Headline from Catholic News Agency. The Vatican nativity scene 2021 will include llamas and superfood for baby Jesus. Yeah, that's a real headline. Now, we remember the nativity scene from last year, right? If you've forgotten, here's a fresh reminder of that display, which looks like something out of the mind of David Bowie than anything to do with the faith. You've got astronauts and other bizarro creatures here, and the depictions are, as usual, of distorted human beings, which seems to be a constant theme in the modern Vatican-approved art, and that should be concerning because there are spiritual implications there. But that was 2020, though. Here in 2021, we get this. Objectively better, because at least we're dealing with some recognizable human features this time. Now, for those not able to see the images because of listening on an audio-only place like Spotify, which is a great place, backup place to follow me, by the way, we have some South American indigenous art as a presentation of the Vatican nativity scene. And if it was by itself, I'd be fine with that. I wouldn't be talking to you about this at all. But it's from the Andes, which is, you may have guessed it, where the Pacamama is from. Yeah, it never really ends, does it? Though, thankfully, there are no readily identifiable images of that sort this time. At least so far, because more is coming, though, on the story as we get closer to Advent. They're going to have more details and more images that are come out, going to come out. But from the story at the Catholic News Agency, we get this, quote, Last year, the Vatican Nativity set came for some from outer space. In 2021, it's coming from the Andes. The 2021 manger that will be placed in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican to celebrate Christmas will arrive from the town of Chopka, Peru, a small town nestled in the Andes over 12,000 feet high. As of December 15th, and for 45 days, more than 100 million tourists and followers of the media will be attentive to the Christmas celebrations in the Holy See that will revolve around the Andean manger, indicates a note from the Andina News Agency, the official outlet for Peru. Last year's nativity scene, a set of 54 figures dating to the 1960s and 70s, was panned by many on social media. One detractor described it as, Some car parts, kid toys, and an astronaut. End quote. The scene has a Peruvian theme in general, which is again fine, except for the geographic link to the Pacamama and the Amazon Synod. The article never mentions what the superfood is that will be featured with the Christ child, but I'm guessing it's going to be quinoa, since quinoa comes from the Andes. Now stay tuned as more of the nativity scene is unveiled for our viewing displeasure, but let's talk about the Eternal Word Television Network, EWTN. Most of the reporting on this story has already been covered in terms of the facts about what was said, and while I'll go over that briefly, let's take a look at some of the big names in the Francis Church world and what they have said about EWTN. This comes from Christopher Lamb, a writer for the United Kingdom's answer to the National Catholic Reporter, The Tablet, meaning it's an ultra-modernist outlet. The Tablet once was one of the great ones, too, and now it's not any different than the National Catholic Reporter. Mr. Lamb is, to put it mildly, no friend of tradition, but on Twitter he had this hot take, quote, how does at EWTN respond after the Pope says the Catholic media conglomerate is doing the quote-unquote work of the devil by broadcasting attacks against the office of the papacy, end quote? What is he going on about? 
Francis the Great Merciful was asked during his recent tri trip about meany doo-doo headed trads, and Francis turned his ire on EWTN, a network that the people he was talking to might not have heard of due to the trip being in Central and Eastern Europe. But I digress. Here's what the tablet is reporting Francis as having actually said in case you've only heard about this secondhand. Quote, One of the participants tells the Pope about a situation of the Slovak Church and the internal tensions. Some even see you as heterodox, he says, while others idealize you. We Jesuits try to overcome this division. He asks, how do you deal with people who look at you with suspicion? And here is Francis's response. There is, for example, a large Catholic television channel that has no hesitation in continually speaking ill of the Pope. I personally deserve attacks and insults because I am a sinner, but the church does not deserve them. They are the work of the devil. I have also said this to some of them. End quote. See what he did there? First, he has lumped EWTN with traditionally minded Catholics. Newsflash. EWTN are not a traditional Catholic outlet. They are certainly far better than anything else on Catholic television, but the bar for that is pretty low. And there are plenty of fine folks on EWTN, to be sure, but it's not a traditional friendly outlet either. But Francis has lumped traditional Catholics in with EWTN, so we're all one and the same. And that's fine, frankly, and I don't care much to be honest. But the other thing worth noting here is that he has conflated critiques of him as attacks against the papacy, and by extension, as attacks on the church itself. And that's just really off the mark. Those of us who go after Francis don't do it out of hate for the papacy or the church, but because of quite the opposite. We love the church and the institution of the papacy. The institution of the papacy and the church, I, I can't even imagine life without them. The problem is that Francis has so clearly broken from the faith that there is no making excuses for him like people did with past post-conciliar pontiffs. Or whatever Francis is, since that seems to be an open question these days. But let's continue. In another tweet, Mr. Lamb identifies it as EWTN that he must be talking about. And to my knowledge, that's a safe bet, and so has everybody else who's commented on this story already, because EWTN is the only Catholic cable network in existence, to my knowledge. Let me know in the comments if there are others out in Europe and Canada and elsewhere. Quote, Hard to see how Michael Warsaw, chairman of EWTN, can remain as a board member of the Vatican Communications Department unless he orders a change in editorial direction. In my book, I reported how the papal ambassador to the U.S. challenged Mr. Warsaw about Raymond Arroyo's show, but it made little difference. Francis's latest remarks have hugely increased the pressure. Important to note, the Pope says he personally deserves the attacks and criticism, but distinguishes between a personal holding to account and creating hostility against the office of the papacy slash church in general. End quote. So it's been an open secret that the Francis bishops really dislike EWTN, almost as much as they dislike Taylor Marshall for some reason. Raymond Arroyo isn't exactly a hardline Latin mass only guy. He hosts a cable news talk show that discusses, in long form, the events of the church of the day with guests, and he has the audacity to point out that there are problems in the church today and that they can easily be connected at the very least to Francis, although I don't know if he goes back to say, so goes so far as to say they connect to the Vatican, Second Vatican Council or anything else. and. Mr. Arroyo has said, has said that Francis is essentially a self-demolition of the church agent in action, even though he's never used those words, but he has essentially said that in his rather mild and measured coverage of it. And this all brings to mind the prophecy of St. Francis of Assisi that describes a pope that would be a destroyer getting elevated to the papacy, a truly demonic figure. But anyway, Raymond Arroyo isn't a fire breather at all. He just tells the truth as he understands it, and probably most likely is why the Vatican doesn't like him because Arroyo presents the problems that we see today in a way that normal Catholics can easily understand, thus opening the door for more strident figures like, well, me and others who don't feel nearly as much need to be as nice and old media professional as Mr. Arroyo does. And that probably concerns the figures at the tablet and the Roman Curia greatly. Arroyo has a huge audience, and he has a lot of sway with the, with the church in America, even if he doesn't realize it himself. And the Vatican has said quite a lot that the church in America is the epicenter of the alleged coming schism, though the schism, if it does happen, will be the fault of modernist Rome continuing to deviate from the faith, and not the fault of the Raymond Arroyos of the world or anyone else in the laity. Schism and heresy always begin with clerics. Always. Look at the history of the church and you'll see that I'm right. Now, if you think that it's a stretch to say that Francis lumps EWTN with traditional Catholics, at the same meeting with the same Slovakian Jesuits, he then brought up Traditionis Custodis and the need to hammer traditional Catholics some more. Quote, 
Now I hope that with the decision to stop the automatism of the ancient rite, we can return to the true intention of Benedict XVI and John Paul II. My decision is the result of a consultation with all the bishops of the world made last year. From now on, those who want to celebrate with the Vetus Ordo must ask permission from, as is done with, by ritualism. But there are young people who, after a month of ordination, go to the bishop to ask for it. This is a phenomenon that indicates that we are going backward. A cardinal told me that two newly ordained priests came to him asking him for permission to study Latin so as to celebrate well. With a sense of humor, he replied, But there are many Hispanics in the diocese. Study Spanish to be able to preach. Then, when you have studied Spanish, come back to me, and I'll tell you how many Vietnamese there are in the diocese, and I'll ask you to study Vietnamese. Then, when you have learned Vietnamese, I will give you permission to study Latin. So he made them land. He made them return to earth. I go ahead, not because I want to start an upheaval. I do what I feel I must do. It takes a lot of patience, prayer, and a lot of charity. End quote. Ugh. So learning the language of the church, the governing documents of the church are canonically required to be written in, which is why some say Traditionis Custodis is an invalid document, by the way, is less important than learning the language of the faithful, who, by the way, have plenty of vocations relative to the rest of the Catholic population. Go look it up sometime. At least where I'm from originally, the, the, uh, the Vietnamese church there has tons of vocations coming out of it. Now, I disagree personally, but then again, I'm not Pope, and I'm quite happy that I'm not. But again, notice how he lumps everyone who isn't part of the big Jesuit renovation of the church into one big opposition to him. He did that, not the rest of us. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Francis is right, and EWTN is part of the problem for the modernists, and should be lumped in with us rigid schismatic neo-neo-neo-neo-pharisees. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, please. Is EWTN likely headed for another shakeup due to pressure from the Vatican? Or is Francis just complaining and can't do anything about it? Let me know what you think, and like and subscribe if you can. It really does help. As always, please pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.